I put this drawing in here, brothers and sisters, because certainly it's nice to finally see Luffy come back and be front and center in the midst of the action. Uh, if you like this type of drawing and more, remember to follow me on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, and the Instagram. Oh dear, One Piece Chapter 198, 4.15 p.m. Oh boy, that's exciting. <laughs> well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome and intriguing, awe-inspiring tale of One Piece. Our last chapter, of course, saw us with um, really none of the Straw Hats to, to be seen. Uh, it was really, you know, v, uh, Vivi and Koza finally getting to kind of meet, and Koza had finally hitting him, you know, that he's been uh, he's been duped. And uh, and certainly, my opinion on that was is that he was it was duped a little bit too easily. It seemed like he um, seemed like he just kind of you know cut his losses and ran uh, and turned against the kingdom a lot quicker than he should have for somebody that had such strong ties. But that was just my opinion. So the end of the chapter was uh, with Vivi and. Uh, and Koza, of course, had tried to uh, to go. Uh, Chaka bought them some time by slowing down and keeping Crocodile at bay, and they were going to go and try to stop the Royal Army and, of course, the Rebel forces from fighting. Um, we can assume, only assume that one of the Broke Works agents that had infiltrated the uh, the Royal Army side wound up firing on Koza because as Koza's telling everybody to stand down, the last panel of the last page of the last chapter is Koza getting shot a few times from behind, it looks like. so. And I tell you, I wish I lived in this world where you could be so resilient to bullets. I mean, honestly, in, in the world that we live in, I mean, you can literally like like slip and fall off a curb and if you hit your head wrong, I mean, or you hit your head, say, when you're ice skating, you can, you know, have a brain, you know, brain blood swell in the brain, you can die. So uh, this is this is kind of a neat world because it seems like, you know, getting shot is just sort of like, it's always a minor flesh wound. I know it looked like it hit my heart, but I'll be okay, don't worry, you know. <laughs> So, uh, so the chapter ended off, though, with that, and the chapter picks up over here uh, very, very quickly. The first several pages are really the aftermath that ensues after Koza getting shot, because, of course, then the rebels are like, Son of a bitch! The Royal Army fired first! Why would they shoot? You know, and Koza's like, No! Rebels, don't attack! He's like, he's trying to spit out everything he can. You know, he's got blood spewing out of his mouth. He's been shot. Uh, he's just trying to get everybody to stop to stop the bloodshed, right? He realizes what's happened. And then, of course, we see what, what I had thought. We wind up seeing one of the Broke Works agents on the Royal Army side, like, hey, 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 I did my job, right? And, uh... So then we wind up getting uh, in the same thing. Someone winds up firing on somebody in the Royal Army uh, from you know a Broke Works agent that's planted in from the Rebels. And basically that's what the first seven, eight pages are, is pretty much them just inciting the war again. And th there's a sandstorm that starts whipping up. And, of course, to just you know cloud everybody's vision and what have you. And, uh, and we know that that's obviously Crocodile's work. Vivi is still just desperately trying to get everybody to stop. You know, please stop. And the sandstorm's whipping up. And, of course, now people are getting angry. Tensions are running very high because people have been shot on both sides now, even though they were going to supposedly wave the white flag and, and come to a truce. Um, and, and basically there's this double page spread of everybody about to clash or starting to clash and everything going down. Then the next portion of the chapter I think is pretty cool and profound because it, it's Crocodile who's, uh, he's irritated at this point, okay? He's he's Mr. Big Badass, but he, Vivi has really pissed him off because he goes over and he takes the time to go and, and, and and not only cut her down and talk about how stupid the people of this kingdom are, and as he's talking about that, and how your stupid ideals is going to get everybody killed, you're trying to save everybody. Because then she's going, because she, Vivi's still like, oh, and if I can get to here, <clears throat> maybe I can get some people to leave the square, maybe I can save some people. And he's like, yeah, do this, you save the, you stop the rebellion, do this, you stop the rebellion. It's futile. There's no... There's no way you're getting out of this, is what he's saying to her, you know? And then you just kind of see this series of little flashbacks of all the different things that have happened leading up to over the last couple of years. And um, and then you go in and he, he says, he goes, you infiltrated my organization, you know, and spied on me for two years. Good work. And, you know, he's basically saying, like, yeah, I have some respect for that. You were able to get through, you know, all my checks and balances and, and passed all my levels of security to get in there. But ultimately, it did nothing. I'm still here. Your country is full of a bunch of idiots. And it's kind of like I said, you know, these people do have been so easily turned. Now, I know that most people are like sheep and they follow the leaders, so they will follow the, the popular trend or the popular leader. And that is how society is in our own world, right? Um you know, if, if this particular artist puts out a song uh, that everybody likes, everybody jumps on the bandwagon, neither loves them or hates them. You know, it's just how it works. But 
the thing that bothered me was that the leader of the rebels was this Koza who had very, very close ties to the family, um, you know, had lived in the capital for a period of time with, of course, his, his father and mother. And it really just seemed to me a little bit far-fetched that he turned so easily and then wound up amassing this force to go and to rebel against the kingdom. Again, just my opinion. But this uh, scene, though, is, is very grisly and, and because as Crocodile goes and he taunts her a little bit and everything else, and then he says, doesn't matter what you're going to do, you're not going to be able to save anyone. Um, you know, and there's 15 minutes left until, you know, until the square gets blown up over here. Then he goes and he picks her up with his good hand, right? Obviously not his hook hand. Yeah, although that would have been kind of cool if he, like, hooked it around her neck and held her up with it or something. But he holds her up by the throat with his good hand, right? <clears throat> and he just looks, he looks pretty badass and pretty menacing, honestly. And he holds her out over the edge because, remember, she's still kind of up higher, you know, on that, on the top of that, the wall or the building, what have you. So he holds her out over the edge. And as he's holding her out over the edge, you know, he goes and he describes about how nothing, you know, your stupid ideals. And, and it really seems like he's irritated with her. Like he's mad and this is like a vengeance thing because even, because King, King Cobra's like, oh no, Vivi, try to run, you know, get away. And <clears throat> you see, of course, all the just bodies strewn out from Chaka and then the Fugly Four, the Clawfoot Gang or whatever that got messed up and wound up dying themselves because of the poison that they took that made them superhuman. Um... But but you see all the death and destruction, the chaos that, that has reigned supreme. Of course, now everybody's fighting, you know. And this this scene where he holds Vivi out, it only takes place over a couple of pages, but I know I'm drawing it out a little bit longer. But as he's going and he's taunting her and he's talking to her, again, it seems like, to me anyway, like she really struck a nerve with him and really pissed him off, you know, with her trying to save everybody and caring about her kingdom above all else and everything. Because he's, you know, he's like, he's like you know, weak-minded fools like you, you know. And he's thinking, you know, you, you idealistic... You know, idiot, this is how things are going to happen. I'm going to win. So he winds up going and he turns his hand into sand, uh, of course, so she'll just fall off the edge. And we see this cool looking panel where Vivi's there and then Vivi is falling and you're like, oh man, right? And then <clears throat> all of a sudden, it's really cool because they show uh, the sun in the background, you know, and you see the sun, and of course there's the sun, the sandstorm whipping up and everything, which of course crocodile, you know, whipped up. And in the background you go, and I just hear like the epic music start playing. And in my mind, it's like you know, it's like the Indiana Jones or maybe like the Superman music, you know, because you see just like the silhouette of something come flying in and the sun behind it, right? And I'm thinking, oh, Luffy's back. Guess who's back? You know, back again. Um, and, and it is. It's it's Pell, and I, I really, that's how I thought he was going to make his entrance. Anyway, when he did finally come back, um, I was been getting a little bit disheartened, honestly, that it's been so long. I mean, I don't think it's, I think it's been like maybe 20 chapters or something like that since we've seen him. I'd have to count the exact amount, but it's been a while. And uh, and I understand there's many other characters that are great that can kind of take his place. And, and really, the, the story has flowed just fine, but I keep thinking in my mind, like, God, I just want to at least see him somewhere. Just, you know, just see him eating some meat or something, you know? <laughs> So, uh, so that's how the chapter ends, though, is this really badass, like, double-page spread where Luffy's coming. And Crocodile is, like, he's just befuddled, man. He's just, like, impossible. You know, he's, like, straw hat. And then Luffy, as he's coming in on, on Pell's back, riding him like a damn horse, he's just like, Crocodile! <laughs> and he goes and he jumps off so he can, you know, uh, grab Vivi and save her or whatever. But it's great because that's how the that's how the whole thing ends. Is like, Crocodile just kind of being like, oh! In disbelief, like, I thought I killed you. And Luffy, like, uh-uh, motherfucker, you didn't kill me. <laughs> so, uh, so definitely kind of cool here. We're, we're approaching chapter 200, of course. And uh, and certainly I think that, uh, that things are, are going to come to a head here over the next, you know, five, ten chapters. And, um, and, and certainly would like to see Luffy uh, be able to just kind of just kind of be able to take this guy's hook and shove it up his own ass, you know, and really show him what's what. So, um Ultimately, though, my chapter question is, is what do you think about, you know, what I was saying as far as Crocodile? I mean, it really did seem like for this person who's very cold and calculating and uh, it really has kind of been distant from everything else, you know. And even at 1.2, you do see a quick flash of Nico Robin and she's sitting there and she's like, you know, well fought, little girl. You know, you, you fought hard. You tried, you know, kind of like this is the end, though. And, uh, but my thought, you know, my, my question really is, is what are your thoughts on, on Crocodile? I mean, it really seemed like he was, like, she was no longer just a little nuisance to him, you know? I think that he kind of took the infiltrating his organization as a grain, you know, with a grain of salt and kind of was like, yeah, congrats on that. But really her determination to go and enlist the help of the Straw Hats, be able to get back to Alabaster through all the things that were put in her way. I mean, you think about all the different agents that were sent after them and all the obstacles that were put in their way. 
for her to still make it there, <clears throat> and then not only make it there, but to go and make it as far as she has and to just keep coming and keep coming at him, I think it really has pissed him off and it struck a nerve. So uh, let me know what you think, though, brothers and sisters, in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it, and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching you in the next one, nation. He's saying it's okay, little boy. Don't worry about my arm. I'll get another one.